Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a somewhat intriguing new study in regards to the formation of black holes, and specifically supermassive black holes like the ones we find in centers of various galaxies. With the intriguing new study you can find in the description below, focusing on the most accurate simulation showing us how massive black holes seem to grow and how they develop over time, but most importantly, discovering something that was always speculated but never confirmed. As these black holes form, especially in the early universe, because these early galaxies are extremely dynamic, very active and contain a lot of gas, a lot of additional effects seem to be responsible for controlling the accretion disks and allowing these black holes to either grow or to stagnate, and that something is super powerful magnetism. And so let's discuss the study and the simulation as well as the discoveries in a little bit more detail, but first let's actually connect all of this to one of the biggest mysteries coming out of James Webb Space Telescope in the last two years. The discovery of unusual, supermassive and very active galaxies only 600 million years after the Big Bang, along with the additional discoveries of a lot of very very massive black holes pretty much all over the place in the first billion years. But all of these black holes were in a lot of developing galaxies, where surprisingly the mass of the black hole was actually just as massive as the mass of all of the gas and all of the stars, and that's extremely different from anything around us. In galaxies like the Andromeda or the Milky Way, the mass of the central black hole is usually only about 0.1% or even less of the total mass of the galaxy. And so there is a bit of a discrepancy between what the black holes used to be like and what they're like now. And so as the result of these discoveries, in the last year or so, there's essentially been a kind of a speculation that whatever happened in the first billion years was probably extremely different and very unique compared to anything that happens now. And specifically, the galaxies and black holes potentially formed and developed in a radically different way, especially because things were a lot more dynamic and quite more energetic which was also the assumption by the scientists from this study. And they actually came to this conclusion based on their own simulations, where the first collaboration or their first simulation known as feedback in realistic environments, also known as FIRE, that focused on a large-scale universe, studying how galaxies form, seemed to actually produce slightly different results from the other collaboration known as STARFORGE. The collaboration and the simulation focusing on small scales such as star formation. And so they discovered that there was a relatively large gap between the two and they couldn't really explain why. And in order to solve this mystery, they decided to create something else that essentially involved individual scales, with each of the scales calculated separately but added as a whole to the simulation. And this was a huge computational challenge involving multiple formula and massive computational power, but by using a code called Gizmo, they were able to recreate a multi-scale formation of a typical supermassive black hole, but in the middle of a typical galaxy that seems to be forming as well. And so by creating such a multi-scale simulation, they discovered something nobody expected, or at least nobody knew for sure until now. In this relatively massive black hole of approximately 10 million solar masses that was forming somewhere in the beginning of the universe, all of this primordial gas that falls into the black hole forms an accretion disk that's very different from what the scientists predicted since the 1970s. And so based on a lot of studies and a lot of previous simulations, researchers expected a somewhat flat disk, a disk containing a lot of superheated gas that illuminates everything, producing different types of wavelengths. But for the most part, this disk was supposed to be controlled by gravity and also the change in pressure because of huge temperatures that this gas experiences, with that pressure potentially preventing the gas from collapsing into black hole right away. And of course, there was supposed to be magnetic influence as well, but it was not supposed to be very large. That's of course based on simulations from before and a lot of different analysis, including mathematical analysis, since the 1970s. But that's actually very different from real observations and more importantly from this new simulation. Because as we know today, these disks are not really that flat and seem to be more torus shaped or even more fluffy, with the actual disk appearing very different from a typical flat object. But this simulation shows us something a little bit different. Turns out that the disks are not as flat because they're dominated by magnetic fields almost completely. As a matter of fact, as the simulation zooms in on the black hole, 
focusing on the regions where the accretion disk forms, the thermal pressure seems to be relatively minuscule in power, but the pressure from the magnetic fields appears to be at least 10,000 times more than the pressure from the gas or even gravity. And this magnetic interaction starts at approximately 0.3 light years away from the black hole and becomes extremely strong the closer to the black hole you get. Which basically suggests that pretty much most of the accretion disk, at least in this black hole, seems to be entirely controlled by magnetic fields formed as a result of all of this gas rapidly falling into the black hole and forming a lot of unpredictable magnetic lines which then produce additional effects. And although scientists knew before that magnetic fields seem to be responsible for astrophysical jets and even contribute to the feeding mechanism around black holes, it wasn't until this simulation that the magnitude of these effects became apparent. And the reason this discovery is so important is because it might finally explain how these massive black holes and massive galaxies were able to form so quickly in the early universe. There's really no other explanation except for some kind of an additional force that caused them to become so massive so quick, and in this case, the magnetic force actually fits the bill, suggesting that in certain situations, extremely powerful magnetic fields can physically encourage black holes to grow rapidly, while also forcing a lot of gas around the galaxy to start forming stars as well. And so one of the potential resolutions to the mystery from the early universe could actually be powerful magnetic fields around these early black holes. Something that has been suspected before, but something that has never been physically seen until these simulations by the researchers from Caltech. With all of this suggesting that magnetic fields seem to play the major role in forming and shaping huge disks around early black holes, while also serving additional functions such as changing the overall shape of the disk, making it a little bit more poofy, and of course creating additional effects such as the super powerful astrophysical jets. And that's of course something we observe around baby stars as well. One of the older videos in the description talks a little bit more about this, but today we know that very similar effects seem to control the growth of stars as they acquire their own accretion disks and as they grow in size. But that feeding mechanism seems to be also controlled by extremely powerful magnetic fields produced by all of the gas swirling around baby stars. Which basically suggests that this is a universal phenomenon and of course influences a lot of things in the universe, potentially explaining a lot of anomalies we previously could not explain. But that's just one simulation for now and one potential explanation for a lot of these early galaxies and early black holes. And you can learn about that mystery in one of the previous videos in the description below. And so once we have additional information or more simulations, we'll come back and talk more about this, trying to connect all of this together. Until then, check out the study in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.